It's me, the Infrit, and good afternoon and welcome to the podium. Our quote for today comes from Daniel Bell, an American sociologist, and it says, technology like art is soaring exercise of the human imagination. Well, coming up in this edition of the podium, Office of Directorate of Science, Technology and Innovation ends live conversation between the Chief Innovation Officer and former UK Prime Minister. The All People's Congress Party inaugurates its 1995 Constitutional Review Committee and the Great Scarce Secondary School clocks 50 years of existence. Well, all these and more coming up in this edition of the podium, which you can be part of by sending your messages to 0883735504. The number again is 0883735504. This is the podium. My name is Daphne Zainab Kamara. Welcome to the podium. A live conversation between Sierra Leone's first ever Chief Innovation Officer for Science, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Moinina David Senge, and the retired Honorable Tony Blair, former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, has ended at the Amphitheater Auditorium, Frabi College. The live conversation is the first to be hosted by the Directorate for Science, Technology and Innovation and it, it attracted ICT experts, students and young innovators across the country. The focus was on technology and innovation. The future of government and its aim and it is aimed at ICT B. So be at the center of the new direction programs and policy. The conversation comes at a time when the country is still grappling with the ICT sector, which has many challenges. So how can government tap into such conversation? Well, I have in the studios a member from the Strategic Communications Unit and the Ministry of Information and Communication, Imam Sila. Good afternoon. Welcome to the podium. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. So how can, um, well, let, let's talk about the relevance of this conversation. Well, uh, look, uh, I mean, if you, if you look at the global trend, uh, both in, in developing nations and developed nations, I mean, uh, you, 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 see, you see a trajectory where uh, technology is slowly, I mean, particularly for develop, developed nations, is slowly, I mean, an integral part of, uh, of, of, of the developmental process. And developing countries, I mean, such as ours, are like catching up, basically. So, I mean, I think uh, one of the considerations that uh, His Excellency the President had when being sworn in was to how we could, we could improve or, or, or have some technological advances and see how we could make it a mainstay of, 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 of governance issues, right? And, and I think uh, that was what uh, brought him to, to a point, David Senga, who we know right, is well established and has an appetite right, for for, for technology, information, and communications, and, and how it can be part of uh, of the governance structure in this country. And uh, what we saw today, I think, uh, is very important because uh, one of the things uh, we, we, we need to do and has to be done is to have these conversations. And uh, but look, it's, it's, it's a good place to have such a conversation okay. today with Tony Blair. Right to encourage young people. Yes, yeah, but, but what 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 um, 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 some school of thought may say? Why Tony Blair? Because mm. quite re recently we saw David and mm. Bill Gates in yeah. the goalkeepers um, session yeah. in the United States, mm. and we know that Bill Gates is very relevant in mm. when it comes to technology. Yeah. Why Tony Blair? Well, I, I think Tony Blair also is uh, is equally very important because it's 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 about. Uh, uh, pushing forward uh, a message, trying to encourage. I mean, you, you could consider him to be a motivational speaker. And it's the same for, for Bill Gates. I mean, in as much as he has, a, I mean, a special interest and is actually putting money into, into technology, right? Uh, Tony Blair might not be and doing it. he has it. the brains also. Well, I mean, precisely the point. But then it's also about motivating. I think that was the essence of the exercise today, which is to motivate young people to become more interested in technology, how we could have 
a society that is uh, 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 driven by technology. I mean, he mentioned, I, I watched uh, the, the debate live here from your own very studios here, and uh, we, we saw the conversation between uh, Tony Blair and David Senge. One instance that David Senge gave was uh, when NC, NCRA, uh, Mohamed Masakoy, went to the Ministry of Finance to present Maybe certain sure. details. I hope you understand. Yes, so, I, I mean, governance, governance is basically data-driven. And there are a lot of things that you can do with the data you have. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're unable to get the data and translate those data into what it means and what it doesn't mean, how you can use it to develop, I mean, certain areas on health and education, on, on infrastructural development and, and, and so on and so forth. I mean, then you, you, you basically are doing things the old way. And, and Tony Blair did point it out and say, look, I, I feel I'm old school. Right? And in a way, I connected with that particular statement because I, I might not be exactly as old school as him, but that's how I feel because technology for me is not my thing. But then I also understand that uh, in this time, in this day and age, technology is very important and it cannot be excluded from, from government and, 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 and the way it, it goes about doing business. So I think it is important right, that we try to encourage the younger folks who for them, it is their generation, it is their thing. They should be the one actually moving this concept, this vision of the president forward, right? To, to, be, to be infused, if that's the word, to be infused about it and, and to go out and look for ways and means as to how they can contribute to the technological uh, development and advances that we hope to achieve on the on So, the so let's talk about um, um, Tony Blair's message to yeah. motivate these people that were going there to mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I think uh, he, he's a great speaker. He's always been. I have followed him for a very long time, even before he became prime minister. And I, I watched a few uh, uh, PMQs, it's called in the UK, parliamentary uh, question time, uh, which happens once every week. And, and he's so good at, that, uh, at actually pointing out right, the importance of everything that he, 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 he talks on. Right? And for today, I mean, I think the message was simple but, but precise and to the point, which is, it is your generation, it is an opportunity, and, and the president has, has put this at the center of his administration and his government. So, uh, what you need, and that is what he was in, I mean, encouraging us to, 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 to believe in, that you have the right kind of leadership who believes, who believes that technology should be at the center of governance issues. And so, look, for young folks, it's Frobe College, at the College of IPAM, at uh, the College of, of Medicine, get involved, right? You all have some, some inner potentials you don't know. And until and unless you, you, you reach out to, to, to those aspects of you, right? I mean, you, 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 you probably might not be able to, to find out that, yes, you can contribute. And so, I mean, those are words of encouragement and Senge too, is at the centre of it. I mean, walks from state house, who touches base with the president. On, I mean, on a daily basis, and with the vice president, right? Knows exactly what the thinking is, what the policy is going to be, how to encourage young folks, right? Which he has done so far. He's picked up on a few. I mean, he mentioned someone who was doing, I think, is it physics or so, that uh, he's brought on board. That's uh, 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 I can't quite remember the name, but she's at Fabric College. She's been brought on board. So. I mean, those are the things. I mean, as many people, I mean, it, it, no one can reach out to everyone, yeah. right? But the hope and the expectation is to reach out to as many people and, and create that opportunity for them so that, in a way, they can create something unique right, that would help in, 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 in contributing to, to governance and governance issues and, and the way it is perceived, transform data into, into hard realities. And, and, and see how you can now use those data-driven uh, 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 things that you have to, to help right, with policy formulation and all the rest of it. I think that, that's the expectation and that's the hope. Okay, and also um, um, Imran, um, one, um, people may not um, disagree with me by describing the president's appointment of David Senge mm. as epic. Mm. And you know, um, yeah. so mm. what, what was, what did he showcase today on from the Sierra Leonean side? Mm. Well, I think, I mean, it shows uh, there, there are a lot of Sierra Leoneans with talent. Right? There, there are a lot of Sierra Leoneans who live in the diaspora who uh, have got unique skills and uh, 
uh, and can contribute, right? So uh, he's one Sierra Leonean we're proud of. I've followed him a bit. I mean, ever since his appointment, I didn't know about him. I know the dad very well. I mean, we're friends. He's older, obviously, yeah, but we're friends. And uh, I mean, I think David Senge is, is one Sierra Leonean that we're, we're very proud to have, right, with us in government. Right, pushing forward these ideas and has a president who's receptive, who understands that technology, I mean, should be the mainstay of governance and has to be, uh, I mean, at the center of, of governance issues and the way we, 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 we look at issues around uh, uh, many things in health, in education, in agriculture, as I have stated. And, and we hope we can have many more of David Senge. I mean, it's, it's a brilliant appointment by the president and uh, we saw from uh, the public lectures today that uh, is worth every bit of uh, uh, what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Continue to stay with us in the program. He is Imran, Imran Sila, member of the Strategic Communications Unit, Ministry of Information and Communication. Well, for another issue this afternoon, the Deputy Chairman and Leader of the Main Opposition, All People's Congress Party, has unveiled a 23-man constitutional review committee at a press conference held at the party's office at Old Railway Line. The review is among many recommendations reached by a nine-man committee that was put together by the party to look at issues that are affecting the party's winning the last presidential elections. After the March 7th elections, the party has been licking its wounds and is now on lessons learned on key decisions it took whilst in power that might be haunting their conscience today. Among the sections that should be reviewed is this selection of national executive and flag bearers and the functions of the National Advisory Council. Well, for more on the committee's mandate, I have in the studio the Deputy National Publicity Secretary, one of the APC party, Honorable Robin Fali. Good afternoon. Welcome to the podium. Good afternoon, Zaya. I mean, thanks for having me. Um, now, um, let's talk about the mandates of this committee, review the constitution, is that all? Um, well, the National Advisory Council uh, Committee of the party, um, which is the second highest governing body of the party, um, on the 20th of May, um, established a nine-man committee. Um, the mandate was to investigate the circumstances leading to the party's performance at the 2018 um, general elections and to make recommendations to NAC. Um, I think the methodology that was used by the Nyman Committee was orally and written um, submissions we are elicited from a wide spectrum of volunteers right across the country that are party faithful to ascertain what we are some of the causes that led to our performance. We know very clearly that we won the elections, but the results were not given to us for many, many reasons by my neck. But having established those facts, I said the committee was put together to ascertain some of those factors and glaringly you know, one of the major factors that have, have come up is um, the the, um, the constitution of the party. We have the 1995 December 1995 constitution of the party and we strongly feel as a party that it needs to be reviewed and, 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 um, and um, revisited because we are living in a dynamic world. Um, it's like having a critical incident analysis. You look at what has happened, what went wrong, how did it go wrong, and how you can make sure you make it user-friendly in going forward. And our party, under the leadership of Comrade Dr. Anas by Kuma, has taken the bold step to realize that a lot of mistakes happen. Now, when you say um, a lot of mistakes happened, and um, now you are looking into why you lost the elections, and you're bringing up the, um, um, the, 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 the idea that you didn't lose, are you, uh, is the APC not becoming a sore loser? No, not at all. Um, I think it's about reflection. We all, it's very glaring that th those elections, the results were not what should have come out. You know, we didn't go to status, but we know clearly that look at, I mean, 68 members of parliament there. It's very clear that we have a majority. The numbers are there, the numerical strength is there. But what has happened is we know that we, the elections were rigged, we know that we have issues. But in going okay, forward. Okay, we'll come to the justifications yeah. you have for that mm -hmm. statement. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the clauses that will be reviewed. Yeah, that's why I'm saying we are going to have a holistic look at, uh, at our constitution. Because, you know, you had the NRM, the National Reforms Movement, young dynamic um, um, members they of the party. Pull your ears to do no, no, the, I mean, it's, it's, it's an athletic model that we are using. We have to listen to each other. 
Um, the party is an institution, and the party has come a long way since 19, 1960. And again, in looking at the dynamics now, the present unveiling circumstances, we have to open up. We have so to when you say open aspect. up, well, was it not opened because we know that it was uh, run by just one man? No, not at all. His decision was final. Not at all. Why are you disagreeing? Not at all. Not at all. Not Especially at all. the selection part. Of no, the no, no. The way, I, I think all what's happened. Because most times, some, you will just make a statement and every one of you will concur and support. No, not Nobody at all. Will be there not at all. I think that's your own. Say, this is not correct. No, that's your own. Uh, um, um, but you uh, reviewing this now shows mm. that you were not happy with how, with how the party was. If you won. could just listen Those to days. my presentation, I okay. think I'm here to present a case on behalf of my party. Yes, you are, yeah, but you course. have to be in line of with course. the course. Of course. But yes, but the questions they are posing here is not like we are having. But you have debate. answers to them also. Of course. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. That in going forward, okay. we are a party that believes that it should be inclusive. We are a party that believes that every single voice of the party should be listened to and in as much as those young men and women within the party and within the rank and file of the party strongly feels after all you know i mean consultation that we need to revisit our constitution i think it's imperative so how long was this process this process started yesterday okay. because um young men and women put together under the um, um supervision of the current um, G um secretary general with another um, senior brains to be given the, uh, the honors to make sure they manage the, the, the process. She started yesterday and that's going to go until the end of January. Okay, and we'll come after to, that, we'll come be able to, to the make up because I've had um, people t um, 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 expressing concerns about the makeup of this nine man committee. Mm -hmm. Say um, that there's not much gender balance. Mm -hmm. so let's talk about the makeup. Well, the makeup, I think, um, what the party looks at the strengths of all individuals involved. You have um, learned gentlemen and ladies in there. Um, you have um, party activists. You have, so there are how many women out of the nine? You have, I think, about three or four four women in there. Women of substance. You have Isita Kabia, you have Wara, um, um, Sarah Kama and all others, they are all there, you know. But again, I think it's cost across. Okay. You have young men, you have young women, you have um, older brains with experience, so that we ensure that again, we have to take the party from where it is now to where we want it to be. We want it to be more uh, um, involved, we want to be more inclusive, and to me, the numerical strength we have it, but we want it to be more stronger than ever before. And in going forward, we need the constitution that will last another couple of years. Because as we live in a dynamic world, we have to open up and we have to make sure that things are things happen to ensure that it's it's intended with the present circumstances. And now honorable, the bone of contention of NIM was the selection clause mm -hmm. and um the lifetime chairmanship. Mm -hmm. So what is going to happen now during the review process? Uh, these are some of the misgivings. I think um as a party we never had any clause to say that um, regarding lifetime presidency, uh, lifetime chairmanship. Nobody is supernatural. Nobody will ever live forever. So how would you say somebody is going to be a chairman forever? No. What happened is... So oh, um, during the past 10 years of the um, President Gomez regime, mm. why didn't you hold an election to choose a chairman after itself? Uh, well, that's where I'm saying, you see, the issue of selection... It's like is you went along with the lifetime the, the, is, the issue of selection is still democratic. Selection is about, like, for example, let me just say a classic example. Imran, a brother of mine, we compete for, even I mean, we contest for a particular position. They look at the strengths of both, both parties and they'll say, Imran, you and Robin go and consult each other and come up with one person. And this consultation is part of democracy. Selection is not never negative. It's about being, it's only when it becomes negative, it's only when it's not transparent. And when it is the which you undermine the facet of the but, what, but, what, but what if it is not it's not for the common good of the people, especially the the, the party people? Well that's where at least you have various schools of thoughts coming up now. And that's where it's imperative that we review our constitution to ensure that everybody feels part of it. And that is why all shades of opinions were taken into cognizance to ensure that we have a constitution that is being accepted by all. To take us from where we are now into the next uh, uh, um, 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 de few decades or so. So it is very important okay. that um, one to make it very clear that Comrade Dr. Nesbekuma was never 
endorsed as a of light up president is because of the good works that he's done. He took the party from 2002 to 2000 and um, to 2018, and he did enormously well. Outstanding performance in taking the party to every corner. There's not a single corner in this country that you know, does not have a mem the membership of the APC. And so, so it's very clear that because of the outstanding leadership that he has shown, that is why people decided that let him continue to take the leadership. And today, yes, he took us into go in, um, governance, but today it was him again that was the head, head of the mantle of, uh, of leadership that we lost the election. So it's the onus lies on him again to pick us up as a unit. And we are very solid together with his support. And that's why more young men and women are coming on board to ensure that those who are the experienced brains to work closely with the young, with the young, so that that uh, synergy, the dynamics, will take us from where we are now to bounce back, definitely to power in 2023. Okay, Honorable Robin Fale, let's talk about other areas that will be reviewed. Okay. Um, other areas that will be reviewed, we have, um, we have the NAC, the National Advisory Committee, the second highest governing body, and it, you know what I mean the. The membership, you know, of, of that particular NAC should also be reviewed to have a national affairs. As it stands now, you have about 39 members. Six of them, five of them have passed away and one has retired. So we need more young men and women to, because you realize that the voting population is made up of about 60% of young people. Now, young I'm people. needing more young men and women. Mm. Why don't you look at the quality of these people? But the they should be mm. independent, mm -hmm. not um, follow mm -hmm. the leader. Mm -hmm. So don't you think so? Of that course. I mean, every good leader should have partners, not followers. We are not part followers of Dr. Anes Baikuma. We are partners. And we can sit together and discuss and take things forward. And that is why, in going forward, he has embraced all the young people. Come around. This is your party. And again, one of the issues that we need to look at again, which has been accepted by the party, the recommendation, one of the recommendations is the, the issue of succession. That we have to develop our leaders in going forward because once you you know i mean have young people that you you know i mean they've got the institutional memory of the party and you've got the attitude and values of the party i think you'll be able to have a, an easy easier succession so those are some of the issues and the other one is the two sim saga oh, it yes, really affected that, us that, crossly yeah. and again as a party we had two key roles to play one we had a party in government and again it was a government so we had to make sure that the constitutional uh, provision is being upheld. And what's that, that's again, we are the biggest losers in this, because most of our um, key candidates, we are from the diaspora. Some are performing parliament, some are very outstanding debates, some had well, the outreach activities. Would you honestly mm. uh, um, say that you did that to, to honor the constitution? No, not at all. Or was it not because you wanted to target somebody else? No, not, not at all. If you... Mm. And you did could, that to your if you could recollect, the if you could recollect, very um, coming to the um, to the elections, it was very topical. You had lawyers coming up, coming up those because issues. Of one law, no, but in law, no, not for because of one. No, man. how would you go after one person and destroy your party? We decided to. It was a very uh, thorny issue. It was very critical, but it was very constitutional. You have lawyers here. A law. Some, some, um, you have you have provisions in the law, but it will only become very topical if it's been challenged in court. And if there's an evidence, then it becomes very, very, very easy, to, uh, very difficult to challenge. But other and parties have people from the diaspora also. Of course, that's where the SPP and other political parties, we are mindful. Because it would have been very uh, counterproductive if we would have given all those symbols today, would have been in court. And most of 60-50% uh, of all our candidates would have been uh, disqualified because of the two same issue. But today, we had uh, uh, the bitter branch of it because we took a big, big, big risk. But today, everybody has realized that it was not done to disenfranchise anybody. It was not done to discriminate against anybody. It was not done to marginalize against anybody. But what we did was to ensure that the constitutional provision was being held so that at least nobody would have taken us to court and to be, to be disqualified. So when we're going forward, we are going to work with our uh, political, uh, with the members of parliament and other political uh, uh, players to ensure that Section 761A, which, dis which actually disqualifies people with dual citizenship, should be taken into cognizance. So, so by the next uh, elections, you would have solved that issue? Well, we are working. That's why we are working with our political parties. 
in parliament, you have the old, the SPP and other political parties. You had Kana Yonkela also making those suggestions. So we're all going to work because the thing is affecting all of us. You have good brains. You just had a assembly and others. You know, you had other. You have other good brains abroad who could who could add value to the chain here. But because of this constitutional provision, it is limiting the efforts that they could do. So that's where we want us to be open-minded about our constitutional provisions okay. to ensure that we have a constitution that will not discriminate against people devoid of tribe or devoid of or devoid of any other uh, 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 provisions okay thank you very much continue to stay with us on the podium he is honorable robin Fale, the deputy publicity section one of the old people's congress the great care says baptist secondary school in mambolo chibdom cambia district club has clocked 50 years. The Old Students Association and the school administration are now in a high gear to celebrate the, uni the anniversary and plan to improve the school that is faced with numerous challenges. Well, for more on the issue, I have in the studios Kabakonte, a member of the media committee of the 50th anniversary planning committee. Welcome to the podium. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, let's talk about the achievements of the school for 50 years. 50 years has been a very long period when you look at the, the trends and developments that have uh, taken place in the school. But, um, you know, prior to that period, a whole lot of things were happening in the northern region in terms of education. We had a problem with schools in that area. And so, um, the blessed memory of um, Father Sikowski, a German Baptist missionary, you know, who came around the area and thought it fit that, um, you know, the Mamolo area, to be specific, for the Cambia, the lower Cambia area, had no school at that time, mm -hmm. secondary school particularly. So he thought it fit to establish the Skiasi Secondary School in that area. And the establishment of that school has brought a whole lot of benefits for all of us, you know, and um, we've achieved a lot. You know, prior to um, the war, that is 1991, because the school was established in 1968. And during that period, we've done a lot, you know. In fact, um, some people, in fact, the whole country knew our name at that time as the Cambridge of the North because of the extreme performance and the extraordinary performances of the student at that time. So from that period to now, when you look at the records, 1973, we did very well in the GCO levels. And coming down to 1998, Beke, we were second nationwide. Down to 2000 to 2002, Beke, we came fourth. And then coming down to 2003 to 2004, Beke, we came third, countrywide. And then in 2004, down to 2005, we were first, the whole country. And then 2008 to 2009, Beke, again, we came second. So that tells you that we have actually come a long way and we were performing very well, up until the interruption of the Ebola and the war. Yes. But now, how is the school fair now? But just like all other schools in the country, we all know that um, education is a challenge, and it's a very serious challenge, um, which requires, you know, um, urgent attention. Yes, so we are doing, yes, over the years we've been trying, but for now we have some difficulties. So let's talk about the Yes, especially in the areas of um, qualified, trained and qualified teachers, and the few ones who are available at the moment, yes, they are trained, but approval. Is another problem. So, what, is the school an approved school? Yes, it's an approved school. It has existed since 1968. Okay. Yes. So, those are the problems we're facing. And in fact, infrastructure. You know, the number of students, the intake has increased tremendously. So, we're having problems with um, the space. We're having problems with space. So, you see, so we need the help of the authorities to ensure that the students who are coming into the school are appropriately accommodated. Because accommodation is a problem. Without a proper accommodation, I'm not sure if the school would so do well. Is it well. a boarding school? No, it's not a boarding school. So it's why, a mixed school. Why you talk about accommodation? Accommodation, when you have a number, because mind you... For well, the classroom. Yes, the classrooms. Mean? Yes, the classrooms. But for 50 years, what have you been doing to improve that? To build the, uh, the kids' pay school fees except for this uh, um, free education? That effort, yes. We, we've strived, we, we've strove. I mean, strenuously to ensure that um, you know, things were provided for the student to do well. There was that um, you know, um, good atmosphere, conducive atmosphere for them to learn. But over the years, as I told you earlier, the number has increased. And we've provided our own efforts in our little way. 
In fact, because we envisaged the problem of um, teachers, what we normally do is to ensure that we bring on board students that are in the tertiary institutions okay. to come down and help our brothers and our sisters there. Because for now, they are you know, seriously deprived. Seriously deprived. And all of us... So what have you done about that? Have you contacted the Ministry of um, Education on that? Of course, yes, they know. They are well aware of that. In fact, this is what I'm saying. The problem of education is not a secret anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the problems we are facing. But to help our own little way, we come down at Fabi College, at Palm, and other institutions. We bring our brothers who have just gone through the institution, the Scarcity Secondary School, to come down and help our brothers. That's how we do to what manage. What if the they can't? Because some may say, "I have, um, I paid my way through school, and now uh, I'm doing voluntary." Exactly. Work. So no, yes, you have a few others who would say no. All right, but you have others who, because of the love of the school. Because of what they so gain from the school. That? Are you part of yes, that? of course, yes. So let's talk about yes. the um, 50th anniversary celebrations. Yes. What are you celebrating? We want to celebrate, and also to give thanks to God, because taking 50 years is not a it's not a child's play. It means that you've gone through a lot in life. 50 challenges. Years you have to be like me. Yes, yes. You see, so that exactly. So you see, so we have to. We are celebrating because of the successes we had over the time, and then we are also giving thanks to God for seeing us through all these trials and tribulations, all right? So in, in respect of that, we've just um, applied a series of activities, you know, that would, you know, take, I mean, in place by the 1st to the 9th of October, I mean, in December, this year. So th these activities, are they fundraising activities to alleviate some of the challenges you've mentioned? Precisely so, yes. So Precisely let's talk so. about them, the activities. Yes, and, um, you know, the school has been a while, I've it has been around for a while. So we have students who are not even within the country. They traveled, so we have students in diaspora. They also have their own contributions, mm -hmm. all right? And then, coupled with that, we also have students who have achieved in life, who also stay within the jurisdiction of Sierra Leone. Okay. So we put things together, resources together, our effort together, to ensure that we help our brothers there. It would be in the form of material I mean, assistance, it would be in the form of moral assistance, it would be in the form of guidance, and all of these things. So that would be, that will form part of the package of the celebration. It's not just to go and just celebrate with them, dance and no, no. We provide guardianship to them. We tell them that with hard work, they will achieve in the future. So these are the essential elements of the celebration. Now, apart from the Ministry of Education, we know that there are certain companies who, due to their um, um, corporate social responsibility, sponsor education and all sorts in areas where they are located. Don't you have any in that area? Yes, sir. That you would write to and ask for help. Yes. Because sometimes waiting on the government will take time because, as you said, yes. education is for the whole country, not just limited to that exactly. part of the country. Yes, we've done that over the years. In fact, um, remember, it's a missionary school. And um, the Christian. So the, the mission is not sponsoring the school anymore? No, they are doing very, for now, no, they are not sponsoring the school anymore. Okay. But in spite of that, Sometimes with time we, we involve them in some other project for them to assist us because I could very well remember that time there was a, a building that was almost collapsing in the school compound, I mean campus. We solicited the, the help of the missionaries and then they sent something and then it was properly renovated and it was conducive for learning processes. You understand? But for say to say that um, we have contacted NGOs and all the things to help us. No, that has not taken place yet. No, Don't we haven't. Think, well, you should think of that. We haven't. Some do help. Yes, they haven't. I'll take and that also, um, 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 Kaba, let, let's talk about the products of okay. this school. Products. Mm -hmm. we, we've produced over the years, um, you know, a plethora, a barrage of uh, professionals, if I could put it that way. Yes, and uh, a clear case in point, if I could name names, a clear case in point is um, with the, the director of engineering at the SLBC. Haji Bangura is okay. a seasoned and uh, trained, uh, you know, a qualified engineer in telecommunications and uh, broadcasting, uh, you know, um, processes. So he's also a product of uh, scarcity. We've also had over the years other people who have just gone through the institutions, like the um, former Minister of Works, Ambassador, I mean, um, uh, and Mami Petitu Kuruma, okay. and even the current Ambassador to Guinea. You know, okay. it was also a cornerstone of the school. And also, so was, how, how would yes, you, now, now that you have um, um, set up this committee, 
school boys looking after the school, looking out for the school. How would you change the notion of certain people who prefer sending their children to schools in the city and not schools in the provinces? Yes, I think that has to do with discipline. Because when you have discipline in a particular setting, you would excel, you would do well. Now all of us are gone to, I'm a lawyer for now, but I, I went to a village school. I went to the Skazi Secondary School, I passed my exams without any form of um, um, fraud or whatever it is. All right? So it means it's discipline and hard work. That is why the motto of our school is pray and work. All right? So with effort, with hard work, with commitments, I'm sure we would achieve whatever thing you want to achieve in the future. Okay, thank yes. you very much. We'll come back to the celebrations. He is Kaba Kante, a member of the media committee of the 50th <coughs> Anniversary Planning Committee of the Great Scarces Baptist Secondary School in Mambolo, Chiefdom, Cambia District. Well, we go for a short break. When we come back, the podium continues. Well, in case you've just joined us, this is the podium coming to you live on SIBC Television in Cape Town. What's still with me in the studio is Imran Sila of the Strategic Communication Unit, Ministry of Information and Communications. Now, coming back to the Innovation Directorate um, of um, Science and Technology, and um, we know that that's an office for people to work, but because the president's agenda is to Exposed Sierra Leone to technology. Would that directorate also be responsible for teaching people? Because we know that these talk shows, this one 30 minutes um, public lectures are not enough for people to get more insight into what the directorate is doing. Uh, well, I mean, I, I doubt whether the directorate will be responsible for, for teaching people per se. Right, but then uh, I mean I think the, the the responsibility of the directorate is to is to help create uh, the enabling environment, right, for young people particularly who might be interested or want to get involved in in, in technology, right. But then but then also to see how we could get uh, technology in in, in in governance issues basically, right. So I mean across the board, I mean with uh, the economy, with health. Uh, with uh, education, how you could use technology to get the, the, the necessary data and see how you could formulate policies out of those data that you have. Uh, uh, that would be, that would be, I mean, the, 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 the main responsibility. Now, I mean, if that means that, uh, that, that there's going to be a rippling effect, right, uh, with uh, those uh, policies and, and structures where students would be, would be taught, I mean, then, then so be it, but it's not necessarily going to be uh, what uh, the, the directorate would be doing. Now, let us also not forget that, uh, I mean, as a way to encourage young people, I mean, government has also made it free, right, for young people who are going into the sciences, sciences. right? So if you're studying physics, maths, chemistry, yes. biology, or you're going to do medicine, then it's free. As long as you have your acceptance, right, government is taking the burden because I think we need a lot of young people, right, to go into the sciences because that is where we feel that uh, there is a sh shortage, if you like, of, 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 of talents, I mean, across, right? So but, uh, it's not only going to be what the directorate is doing, but yes, what the directorate, directorate is doing is, is going to be central, right, but then also in addition to, I mean, other government areas and what they are doing to make sure that we, that, that we have the necessary synergy if you like, right, to move the issue of technology forward, but then 
it's also technology as against education. That is why you had David Senge saying uh, he thinks that a free quality education is about the best thing that could have ever, ever happen to Sierra Leone at this particular point in time. Because it's only when you have the necessary skill sets or you have the basic education that is when you can you, you, you're able to to encourage more people to move into technology right or that is where <coughs> you are, you're going to be able to get technology into into the lives of, of people on a daily basis um, and also i'm um, so far since their inception mm. how um, involved have they been in what they're supposed to do like take for example the verification exercise mm. because we know that most times when you go for certain documents in some agencies mm. and some institutions you cannot get them you just they have to go through piles of files stop their storage system is not too up to date so how involved are they in helping out these institutions keep a correct mm. data so that when you just punch the mm. punch of a key mm. you will get whatever you need mm. I, I mean i think uh uh, more, more broadly speaking, that's one of the challenges that uh, developing countries have, right? How do you, I mean, access information with the click of a button, right? And uh, Sailing is, is no exception, but uh, that, that challenge presents itself with an opportunity, right, for this directorate and government to make sure that uh, we, we try to make it technologically friendly. So, I mean, for example, I had the Minister of Tourism talking about uh, tourism and how to revive the industry, right? Uh, and one of the ways uh, she 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 mentioned that uh, uh, is the way forward is to to make sure that people are able to access things about Sierra Leone on the click of a button, right? So when she went to London with the team to market Sierra Leone and the various historic sites, I mean the 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 sad reality is people don't know much and people can't access those information. So they had to go, but then another component to it has to be, and which uh, the minister talked about, is how we could make sure we have the necessary system in place so that people could Google. I mean, it's like, for example, that's why you have a lot of uh, tourists going to the Gambia, because at the click of a button, you know exactly what's happening in the Gambia, you know the tourist uh, areas, you know what would necessarily attract you, and uh, you, you feel attracted to those and you buy a ticket to go. So, I mean, that is also, I mean, going to happen, but it's 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 not going to happen overnight, right? Because I mean, it's also down to energy, yes. power supply, and all the rest. So, uh, if if there's the correct synergy, which uh, we hope to do as a government, then you could have the necessary power supply, right? Roll out the necessary technology, even with this uh, SLBC. I think the hope and the expectation of the Ministry of Information, the Honourable uh, Radiswari is to see how we could move forward in terms of technology and make uh, the SLBC like become the place to be. I hope you understand because uh, I think that is what should be the way forward. So, I mean, across ministries, the focus is of government is to see how we could get technology at the center of it, right? But then also how we could also benefit Right in terms of the data we collect yeah. to be able to formulate right, policies that would affect uh, 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 lives. Of and also, Imran, um, finally, before I go to my other guest, mm -hmm. how, how um, would the government be able to achieve this? Because we know in Sierra Leone, the internet connected, because you mm -hmm. cannot just get data mm -hmm. for people out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. to, and when the people in the country mm -hmm. cannot access, we, we know the internet facility in mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. One, it's expensive, it's mm -hmm. slow, mm -hmm. it's not as good as other mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. So how, well, how would the, the government cushion this effect on the um, analyzing the data for the people of the country, not uh, just outside mm, it's, it's interesting you raised uh, this question. Uh, a couple of days ago, I think it was on, was it on Monday or so, uh, there was a retreat at Toke, right, that involved uh, uh, internet companies, mobile companies, and uh, NATCOM, right, that was being uh, uh, done by uh, the, the, the Ministry of Information. And, and that was basically to, to have a discussion around the issues you've raised, and, and how we can help to improve the quality and access, right? But then, but then, I mean, also you understand that there's companies coming in are in it for the for for, for to, as as a business to make money, that that is understandable. But then, 
uh, uh, we know that there are challenges currently, right? And, and those challenges have been around for a while now, right? So uh, that retreat was was for us to get a sober reflection, if you like, right? So working documents, uh, right, should should be in place by now, that would sort of guide, right, and and, and, and help to, to to deal with some of the issues you've raised, right? To make I mean internet more accessible, affordable, right? affordable. I mean precisely. Uh, but but then also I mean to encourage because it's not only for urban areas you might be uh, satisfied yeah. if you like with what's happening in urban areas in terms of the internet connectivity sure. mobile connectivity and all that but I mean in rural places as well I mean how do you make sure that internet and, and mobile companies go further and deeper right at an affordable price knowing that uh, 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 we people might be challenged financially so I mean those issues were discussed earlier this week and and, and we hope that. I mean, at some point, right, we'll be able to have a clear path, right, as to how uh, we, 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 could, we, could, we could go further and deeper with internet connectivity and all the rest of it, and then, but then also make it accessible, affordable, right, for, for every Sierra Okay, thank you very much. And I'm over to you, um, Deputy Publicity Secretary of the All People's Congress. Now, um, Whilst this, uh, this nine-man committee will be working, is it their sole responsibility to reconstruct the constitution or will they take inputs from members of the party? Well, absolutely, because um, they will not be working in isolation. Um, I think um, in view of the mandate given to them, they will be interviewing people, um, they will be having suggestions right across from our membership, even up to the diaspora because they are very instrumental also in the activities of the party. Um, so because we want to have a constitution that will take us um, to the next couple of decades, we want to um, ensure that we listen to every process which affects fabrics of um, within the party. Um, now, the NIMA committee has presented their recommendations, and um, NAC has um, studied that those recommendations have come up with a, um, a working document, which is um, the white paper. So the constitutional review committee will be looking at those um, particular key areas regarding the, the activities and the powers of the National Advisory Com Council or committee and also um, they will also be looking at um, the powers of the chairman leader um, whether we will be, we'll be separating the chairman um, and leader positions okay. and also um, again when the next convention will be, uh, will be put in place and again how to choose our flag bearers. Okay, and also, um, Honorable, before I go to the text messages, let me, um, now that this um, um, process show will be under review, um, would we see a, a convention to it? Because if some of the recommendations have come out mm -hmm. uh, by January, mm -hmm. um, to it's to change mm -hmm. member and um, leadership, and mm -hmm. uh, would there be a convention for that? Or would you wait <coughs> until it's your convention time before you go to elections? We have to work in tandem with our constitution. Um, the so when, when, when it's reviewed, that's what I'm asking, after January? After they've done a thorough yes. um, 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 assessment of, of in terms of what And the new one has been adopted? What will happen is mm -hmm. the, um, it will be gazetted. Okay. And then once it's been gazetted, gazetted it will also no, after take all us those to our convention. Yeah. Our okay. next convention will become because the National Delegates Conference is the highest government all right. to endorse all those. And again, the way we are looking at it will be prepared for our next convention in 2020 mm -hmm. so that from there we'll be able to come up with, um, with our flag bearer. So there will be no immediate change even after the process no, is Because it's, this, these are constitutional provisions. Okay. If you rush with it, okay. you have a lot of court cases coming right. and okay. we don't want to do that. Thank we you. want to listen to each view, every view coming up so Thank that you. once those um, um, ingredients are put in place, the constitution will come up, okay. they will all be happy with it. Thank you very much. Well, for the messages, this one says, why are some APC members desperate, desperate to review the party's constitution? It's too early after six months after election with lots of mixed feelings among members. Let those who are desperate wait a bit. Honorable Robin Farley, are those responsible for what the party is going through by making President Kuma a demigod? 
Indeed, Robin was right to say the one, but God and people's power kicked you people out. Good move by the APC to review its constitution. That selection of the flag bearer was the start of APC losing the elections. President Koroma is responsible for where the AP is, APC is today. He hurt so many people and controlled the party for his selfish interest. I'm happy for the great KSC secondary school. It was one of the best schools in the north. How can you maintain that lawyer content? Can we know the clauses in your constitution that needs to be reviewed? What about the chairman and leader for life? Can the review look at the time frame for that position? How serious is this government in improving ICT? We are tired of tired with talkings. We need action. The Kelvin Doe situation should be key under David Senge's programs. Well, those are some of the messages. Um, I'll start with you, um, Iman. Because yours is brief. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, how serious is the government in improving ICT? Well, I mean, if, if having a directorate at State House right, to deal with these issues uh, doesn't uh, uh, show uh, seriousness, then I wonder what else <laughs> would show seriousness. Because, I mean, we, we know David Senge, if you click the internet and get the name up you you'll see i mean how much he's contributed to 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 ict and how and how infused he is about uh, those issues so i think uh, that appointment alone speaks volumes and it shows uh, that uh, his excellency the president is very serious but again we have to caution ourselves because it doesn't happen overnight okay you know? so, so what about the carbindo situation any uh, I, i'm not fully seized about it, I mean, about the Kevin Doe situation, so I might not uh, go into details, uh, right, with, with, okay, with so that particular, but I mean, overall, it's, it's not necessarily about it. Uh, for me, it's about the broader issue, right? What is the government for? What is the government's focus? What direction? Well, we know, the, uh, we know um, Kevin Doe is one person who took Sierra Leone further with innovation. Uh, ab there absolutely. Been two places where David also has been. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And so the focus of government is to make sure we get as many more uh, as David Senges, okay. as many more Kevin Doe's as okay. possible. And, and I think that's the direction. Thank you very much. And um, great cases. Yes. We talk about the celebrations. And um, someone says, how can you maintain? because it was one of the best schools. Yes. How can you maintain that? Yes, uh, well, we, that is why we are now very active as um, the Old Students Association. We want to work in collaboration with government mm -hmm. and all authorities concerned to ensure that the school you know, regains its um, laurels over time. And I'm sure it's not a one man's effort. Mm -hmm. It's a concerted effort. We have to work with the authorities, as I said, because uh, maintaining performance simply means that you have to have qualified train and qualified teachers. And as an old student association, we don't have the mandate to employ teachers. It is um, the government that has the mm. power to do so mm. through the Ministry of uh, Education. Mm. Yeah. So we have to work with them together mm. concertedly mm. to ensure that we go back to our old days. Mm. Yes, that's how we're going to maintain okay, it. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the celebrations before we leave. How many months are you The celebrate? celebration is just for a week. Yes. Okay. It's just for a week. This week? No, Next it will week. be December the 1st. Okay. Starting from December the 1st to the 9th. Okay. And we've just outlined the series of activities okay. to carry out within that period. Okay. The first to the second would be the arrival of the guests. Mm -hmm. And then we would have a match on the third mm -hmm. between the old student and the current student in the school. And then we'd have a volleyball match on the 4th of December 2018 again. Mm -hmm. On the 5th would be the first day of our annual sports meet. Mm -hmm. And then we would also have a marathon race and a bicycle race on the 6th of uh, December 2018 okay. as well. On the 7th would be the March past and then the reunion night. We'd also make a fundraising program at that time. Okay. And the 8th would be the speech day and the prize giving ceremony. And the last one would be the 9th which would be our Thanksgiving as I said earlier on. We have to give thanks to God. Okay. And then the departure of the guests. Okay, that thank you very much. And um, to you Robin Fale, most of the messages came from the ABC party. Yeah, um, I think... Uh, uh, a, probably, few if, a few of them, a few of them, and quite a good, um, out of the few, um, really focused on the leadership of the party. Um, I think we have to be very honest. Um, as honest um, members of the party, it's not just about blaming or casting blame. We have to look at the strengths of the, uh, the individual in providing leadership. I think it's very clear, it's very glaring that Dr. Ernest Baikuruma under his stewardship um, since 2002 has provided broadened 
the, um, um, the spectrum of the party. It has taken, he has taken the party to every corner of his country. Um, we did very well in the elections. As I'm saying again, we'll continue to say that we didn't lose the elections at all. I think those elections had, had a lot of irregularities, particularly from NEC. But we are going to pursue that. Okay. To the, uh, and to, I think to the conclusion. text that you didn't get when you answered the clauses that in the Constitution that will be reviewed. Well, I mean, I think from um, the submissions out of the um, the Nyman Committee report, which is now a white paper, we are going to the people who want the chairman leadership to be separated. Those are issues to be looked into. Um, the composition of the National Advisory Committee to, be, to, make, to, be made, to, to make sure that more young men and women to be involved. Um, also, the time frame for our constitution. Uh, also, um, how we are going to choose our presidential flag bearer. And that has got to be very um, go through a lot of intensive um, um, scrutiny and consultation. So a lot will be happening. So that is why we want to be open-minded. I think this is the best move in the interest of the party because as a party we want to bounce back. If we want to bounce back, it needs inclusiveness. It needs uh, a lot of tolerance. It needs a lot of um, uh, building of blocks and structures and relationships because there are people who felt they were hot. And we need to reach out to the olive branch to them. So, that so now we will leave you in this constitution, bring that peace. That oh, yeah, I think the spirit in the party is better than a couple of months ago. Because more people have started to come on board. There are a lot of people who felt aggrieved after the convention and they've started to come on board. I think one of the moves made by the leader in chairman is to accept that again, a lot of things went wrong. A lot of successes were there, but a lot of things went wrong. And if you want to bounce back, it's like critical incident analysis. We've gone through like a bereavement. We've, we've been in denial. We've started to accept that quite a good number of things happened. But again, we want to really, you know, win the elections hands down in 2023. So are you sure people will be, the, the party members would appreciate them um, even after the review con um, constitution would be out? Of it will not take a. Um, Clauses that have been reviewed will not um, come into play until after the convention in 2020. Well, that is why um, the, the, the committee reviewing this constitution are very open. You know, people who have to write in, I mean, if you want to write in making your submissions, they are more than welcome, they are willing to do that. I think the more the merrier. I think um, my appeal to all our membership is this is the new dawn, new beginning of the party. We have to come together mistakes that we are that happened in the past, we have to correct those mistakes. Those who probably left the party or who we are snob I mean a bit snobbish because of what happened in the convention should all come on board okay. because the trend it is very clear right now that the people of this country have come to realization that a lot of things have gone down the drain. We need to bounce back again and put the party back on track. Okay, thank you very much. Well that's how we end the podium for this afternoon. Many thanks to my studio guests, um, Great Scarces, Old Boys Association, Kabak Conte, Imran Tila of the Strategic Communications Unit, and Honorable Robin Fale, the Deputy Publicity Secretary Two of the All One of the All People's Congress. Well my producer has been Sam Mataba thought what today came from Daniel Bell, an American sociologist and it says technology like art is so an exercise of the human imagination. Well, my name is Daphne Zainab from the podium returns on Monday. I wish myself happy birthday as I'll be celebrating my birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. And let us know the place to go and see. <laughs>